It's time for this week's wrestling perspective. We're kicking off what is NWA month here with, uh, I'll be honest, Lars, uh, by the way, Lars Fredrickson, uh, he's Lars and you're not, so deal with it. Uh, how's it going, buddy? It's good. Um, you know what? It's just the random stuff that you do in between tours. So I but I'm going know. to, I'm, well, of course you wouldn't, but I'm going to Vegas pretty soon. So that'll be fun. Not a nice little surprise at a, I can't say anymore. Cause they, they, I think they call it kayfabe. Say no more. Let's uh, just say, let's just say tune in to a company called AEW on Sunday and you might see me there doing something that you might know what I'm doing. Yeah. I, doing something what I'm known for, for somebody who maybe is named after a song that I might've co-written. I I'm not saying that this could happen. I'm just saying maybe this would be, be the case, but. You are the worst never. secret keeper ever. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's why I've never gone to jail. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're kicking off NWA month here with, I'll be honest, I've seen Allison Kay a ton of times here in Michigan wrestle. Uh, if it wasn't for me being 44 and slightly creepy, I would have uh, tried to sign up for the uh outlandish dating podcast you did where you picked it Lars it was great I listened to it you uh you dodged the bullet by picking zero of those three guys <laughs> uh, and I I cannot wait to deep dive I'll be I'll be honest uh Marty Bell who's also her tag team partner I've deep dived on many of your interviews I think it was two years ago I listened to a great one, which I actually had PTSD flashbacks to where you're like, uh, I am not going on any more podcasts unless I do the Ricky Starks contract thing. Uh, I don't know if you remember where people kept asking him this typical, who's your trainer? How'd you get into wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, how am I going to not be that guy during this interview? And uh, first and foremost, thank you. NWA Women's Tag Team Champions for joining us on what is our first NWA podcast of the month. We really appreciate you guys. Well, thank you guys for having us. We're uh, we're pretty excited about it. Well, not for me, for for Lars, by the way. Let's get that one out. Yeah, we, I get it. Well, see, I see, Dennis, you're slightly creepy and I'm uber creepy. So it's like, (laughs) perfect. It balances out. It balances out. You know, then you all should have come on that show because. <laughs> so you, it would have been a, a whole different level. Like, hi, I'm a pudgy podcaster. Uh, will you go out with me? And you'd have been like, um, you would have been worse than the corgi. Yeah, Could you have been worse than I the corgi. Think, I don't think it's. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. A corgi like a dog. Yes. A, a man corgi dressed as a. Corgi. But he's cute though. Did you hear all of his answers? Did you listen? <laughs> I did. I. I was in, I listen, I was in, I was in his DMs. Like, should I ask if I could be a contestant? Like, <laughs> I didn't, and, and by the way. Saying this, I feel like you, you didn't stick all the way to the end when, when he finally got kicked off. I feel like you, or you're forgetting this. Maybe you've completely Wait, blocked it out. It was what, a year and a half ago when you did this? I blocked it out. I tried to block it out of my memory. And now you're bringing, up, it now out, you're bringing up my PTSD. <laughs> See, yes. way to go, Dennis, insulting our guests right off the bat. Make your dreams come true. That's what I do here. Great way, to start. Great way to start this interview. I really should have signed that uh, contract. You should have. Yeah, I, I would have now. given you an Amazon <laughs> gift card instead. Now you're stuck here and you get nothing. But right, I do well. want to aim my first question to you, Marty Bell. Uh, listening and getting to know you, your, um, your background in acting and modeling and we've had, when Lars and I started doing this and Petey Williams was part of the show back in the day, by the way, that's how I know Allison. You won't remember me, but I was riding Petey's coattails the few times I've bumped into you. Um, I, I have to ask, and we've asked a wrestler when we first started doing this that who kind of had a similar background, and he gave an interesting answer of, when, when, with your acting background, getting into wrestling, was there a period where you felt like you were playing wrestler and you had to figure out how to, how to like ease into being it, or did it just come natural? You picked up and you were like a wrestler right off the bat. If that question makes sense, yeah, it totally does make sense. There are some aspects of it that I feel like came natural to me, uh, like the speaking parts, all of that. I would say the part that I felt like I was playing wrestler was maybe 
it wasn't even at the start of my career. It was actually a little bit later when I was at Impact because I feel like, obviously I was playing a character. I was in the dollhouse. I was, I was playing an actual character, but also it was my first time ever having a contract. So I feel like I was super nervous and I really, I wasn't a hundred percent me. I was playing somebody that I thought they wanted me to be. And I feel like that definitely held me back a lot. But I think at first I was young and I was dumb and I just wanted to have fun. So like, I just, I didn't, I didn't, you know, when you're young, you're not self-conscious. You just go out there. And I felt like a freaking superstar every time I stepped into the ring. And there are times when I look back on stuff and I'm like, man, I want like the 20 year old, like, just don't care attitude that I had that I'm like, where did that go? Like, how did I lose that? So I think actually, like, as I got older, it made me, I felt like sometimes I was playing wrestler more, more so than when I was younger. Cause I was living out my dream. You know, I was a kid who was finally living out her dream. Well, you know, I guess this question is obviously going to be both for, uh, for both of you guys, but so the end of NWA, you know, long, rich history, this company, it's making a comeback. You know what I mean? You've got TV again, uh, great wrestling. Well, how does it differ for, uh, for you guys from being on the indies and impact, obviously, because it's more of that traditional style, like Southern wrestling, where it's more storytelling, where, where, where it's more, um, what you, would you say, cerebral in the sense where you have to still uh, tell the story, the psychology. So, I mean, I, I, I know like interviewing tag teams, that there's maybe an opportunity to step on each other's toes. So if you guys, I don't know if Dennis asked you, but who wants to go first in these double questions? Just raise your hand and I'll pick you. It's we're actually, it's interesting because I feel like we're pretty good at, I'm sorry, for, I, I'm real. see, I was, I was the kid who didn't raise her hand at class. I just, I just spoke out. I think Allison and I are actually really good with going back and forth and yeah. we don't really step on each other's toes a lot. I think like sometimes we'll finish each other's sandwiches. sandwiches. <laughs> for the most part. I'm so mad at myself for doing that. I'm not. <laughs> For that was great. Part, yeah. we're, we're pretty good at, uh, at like letting like letting each person take uh, what we what, what we what we feel like the other what somebody can answer better. Yeah, but to go back to your question about what the difference is between indies, impacts, NWA. I mean, Marty and I have both worked for Impact. We both worked for NWA, so we can kind of attest to this. And Marty, you can tell me what you think. But I feel like you're probably on the same page. Of, I feel like at NWA, this is the most freedom we've had, especially with a larger company. Um, really being given the reins to take it where we want to, to be who we want to be. Even in the beginning, um, the first, like what, 2019, when Power first started, they never gave us a script per se. Even if they gave us bullet points or an idea of what they wanted out of certain segments, we never had a script and we always could just go out there and just be ourselves. And Billy has always pushed that to just be ourselves. And I feel like that's why we are where we are right now as a tag team because we we made this decision to be a tag team. Well, Thank you're too. talking about the tag team and that was something I wanted to jump in was you guys have been friends for a long time and was like tag team wrestling something that you had on your checklist or was it something you both fell into? Uh, so both of us have been in tag teams before. Um, we always say we were not each other's first, but we're definitely going to be each other's last, um, you know, just out here and uh, we both have been in tag teams I feel like both of us growing up were really big uh fans of tag team wrestling so I think that kind of translated into our careers and we've we've been in some pretty successful tag teams before but a lot of the times I feel like we were just kind of thrown together and we made it work obviously we had good chemistry with the girls that we worked with so we made it work but with the hex we made a very specific very conscious decision to become a tag team this wasn't you know, company that threw us together and said, hey, go out there and be a team now. And I think that definitely translates when people are telling us like, you guys look like you're having fun out there. And we're like, oh, well, because we are. Well, I guess with the whole NWA reboot, you know, they're, you know, like I've been, like I sort of touched on in the last question, just about the long, rich history. So now there's a reboot of this company. Is there any pressure on you guys to kind of almost like, rewrite the history or, or even step up to a standard of what it's been known for? Oh, 100%. Yes. I think especially being the first NWA women's tag team champions in, in what, yeah. since 1983, 83. that I, I definitely feel the pressure. I know Marty feels that pressure. Like we have to perform. There have been other companies and um, people that we've interviewed with other wrestlers that have told us like, we love what you're doing for women's tag team wrestling right now. And I think that alone adds a lot of pressure because we're like oh 
shit, people are watching. They're really watching because, you know, we're, we're doing something here. So we have to make sure that it's not just good, that it's great. Now, hearing that answer and, and, and listening to it, I, I have to ask then, what do you guys have planned to try to elevate the belts? Because right now it seems like as, as hot as uh, NWA is, you don't get a lot of the respect you deserve when people talk about some of the great tag teams or title holders right now in professional wrestling. And do, do you guys have a game plan? Because I'm an NWA guy. I love the product. I've been a fan of both of you for a long time. Uh, you were a short list of who we wanted to talk to when we sent it into the NWA, and here you are. Do, do you have an idea of what you need to do, or do you think you don't have to do anything? I think um, one thing that's been very important for both of us is to be ourselves and do things our own way from the beginning, from deciding, hey, we're going to book a European tour, and we made it happen. And just all these things that we continue to do, I think for us, that's the most important thing is continuing to do what we want. And like, for example, we got to defend these titles in Europe for the first time. They, they had never been defended in England. We got to do wow. that. And not, not just that. And then we also got to win another set of titles while we were there to make it, you know, mean even more. We were supposed to go to Portugal to defend them there for also the first time. So for us, that's also what's important is that we're, we're bringing the titles not, and you know, and obviously we're going to wrestle all over the U S anywhere we can, but for us going international and, and, adding we our names are already in the history books for wrestling now for especially for the nwa and so adding things like that like being able to add you know uh europe and you know hopefully japan hopefully mexico just go to canada like where is where is their wrestling that's where we want to go so i think that for us is our most important thing right now is just to continue to to bring more eyes into the nwa and bring more eyes to tag team wrestling in general and I do think that it's not something that you can necessarily plan. At least that's how I feel about it. It's not like, all right, here's our game plan to elevate the titles. I think that it all boils down to the work, the work that you put in, you know? NWA is not going to have as many eyes on it right now as WWE or AEW. Like that's just, in the numbers, it's just not possible, right? But I think that when it all comes down to it, the, the reason that NWA has built its reputation back is with the work, especially I know NWA likes to focus a lot on the talking, a lot on the promos, a lot on the characters. And I think that sets us apart already. Marty and I love to talk. So I think that sets us apart already. And I think that uh, when it comes down to it, you know, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And I'm not saying that we're not talented, but I do think that that's what matters the most. That was actually my uh, oldest hockey slogan. <laughs> um, and it's true though. It is true. You just, if you, if you work hard, you, you, the dividends will come. So, I mean, as Dennis alluded to earlier on that you guys have been really good friends for a long time doing this tag team thing. Was this something that you guys consciously did? Like, this is something that you've always wanted to do together. So for us, it happened um, during the pandemic, um, especially like, you know, 2020, we, you know, April 2020 was supposed to be huge for the NWA. We had Crockett Cup. We had NWA power tapings. We had so much planned. And then, you know, it was kind of like, oh, well, it looks like things are going to shut down for a month or for two weeks and maybe a month. And now we're sitting at home and it's like August. It's, it was actually probably around ju June, July. And we had just been like tossing this around and kind of talking because we didn't know was NWA going to come back in the aspect that we had seen before. You know, what right. was next for us? You know, we've been in the business for a while now, so it's not like we're like, oh, we're, we're 19 years old. You know, something's going to happen in the next few years. Like, we have to make something happen. And so we were kind of sitting at home and we're like, let's just. So I actually ended up going to Detroit to visit AK. And I feel like before we probably had talked a lot about uh, kind of maybe like doing a team or something yeah. like that. Just like having fun together. Like, and then I went to visit her in August and we went and did a photo shoot. And by went, I mean, we, we literally went to her basement and like shot the photo shoot ourselves. AK edited it. We like styled ourselves, dressed ourselves, and we just put it out into social media. And we're like, if we were a team, what would you call us? And kind of just started like seeing how if people were interested and just seeing what people were, were saying. And then we're like, do they do they call that tag fishing? Ooh. <laughs> you know I mean, what? I again, yeah. but we caught one. A hey. <laughs> that photo shoot turned into this shirt. Yeah. There we go. 
<laughs> Everybody's like really excited about showing off their shirts. So I'm going to do it. Sorry to interrupt you. Bam Sullivan, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, but Please no continue. Blue. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry uh, no, for interrupting. So, um, so I think that was it. Like we, it was a very conscious decision that we made, and and we we you know we thought about everything. We sat down and went over names, and every I feel like every single thing that we have done has been with a purpose in mind, and that is mm-hmm. we kept saying we want to have fun. We want to we want to travel together. We we get to we at that point we're seeing each other once a month at shows, and we're like that sucks. Like I want to see you all the time. I want to hang out all the time. So let's make it happen. And I remember that summer in particular, before we decided to be a tag team, we were having conversations about like, what is next for us in wrestling? Like, are we done? You know, we've been, we've been doing this for a minute. Um, We're not young bucks, if you will, not the young bucks. Obviously we're not the young bucks. We're also not young bucks. Um, You know, we've been here for a minute. So we, we were having that conversation, not that we necessarily were thinking of quitting per se, but we were having those conversations in the middle of, of the pandemic before we, you know, the light bulb went off and we were like, why don't we tag? There's a, there's a hole here. There's a, there's something lacking in women's tag team wrestling. So why don't we fill it? I want to go back, Marty, to an interview. Like I said, I I listened to this. It was, it was a while ago and you were just entering into a program with Allison. Um, And you were talking about how you, uh, you had to go out and try to find bookings at that point. Now, in, where you are in your career, holding the NWA Women Tag Teams Champions, have you noticed now the bookings are starting to come to you? And at, at what point did the ratio start to change for you? Um, I definitely think that there are people that reach out with more opportunities. There's a little, it's interesting because I, I would say that there's a little bit less legwork where we're not reaching out to promoters as much, but there's still work to be done. So like when we had, uh, when we knew we had one date in Europe, well, we can't just like sit back and be like, oh, well, you know, we're going to go to Europe and someone's going to call us. So, you know, I reached out to a bunch of places, AK reached out to a bunch of places. We reached out to places together. There still is a lot of work that needs to be done. It's not, you know, we're not just sitting at home and the phone's just ringing off the hook, but at the same time, we know that we've put in a lot of work. And because I think because of the titles as well. So in the last few almost year we've been holding the title since um since august of 2021 so i think since then we have noticed an increase of people being interested especially in booking us together which for us was like very important um i just had two bookings without ak and those were the first ones i've had i know all year for sure but maybe even since the end of last year so like it was it was weird to be like oh wait i'm a singles wrestler today this is odd like i'm still gonna wear my hex jacket but this is very odd um so it, it, we definitely saw an increase once we became the champions. But like I said, like we, we never just sit back and we're like, well, someone's going to call us. You still have to put the work in. And that's what, you know, that goes back to what AK was saying. Like, no matter what, we still have to work. You still have to put some work in. I can't remember my last singles booking, actually. All my bookings now are with Marty. How you many AAW? It? Where? AAW. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a singles title run. Well, yes, when I yeah. had the title there, for sure. But that was like last year still. Mm-hmm. But What's interesting is I've noticed with the indie bookings, at least for me, I think that the promotions who were booking me before kind of fell off and like, we're getting a lot of contact from new promotions that have never booked us now as a tag team. So it's almost like they're being replaced with, with new ones. I don't know if it's because the old ones are like, uh, you're the NWA tag champs. We're going to have to pay you more money now. Never mind. Versus new promotions that haven't worked with us yet that are like, Hey, we want to, we want you to defend those titles. Lars, can I jump in for a second? No. Okay. Yeah, but please, please. I, you brought up something interesting, and kind of, I feel like part of the death of tag team wrestling was the lack of promoters wanting to pay two people for one match. And I, I feel kind of ignorant. Which is bullshit. I agree. I feel kind of ignorant, though, but can do you, do you have an idea of when it kind of started to change now you're starting to see tag teams pop up again on indies. You're starting to see more tag teams on television. I honestly don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't really re- remember that being a thing only because when, when I was in a tag team before it was a long time ago. So I don't know. It was just a different time on the indies for me. Um, I'm sure that there are people who want to book us and then go, Oh, we have to pay two people and then four all together. mind. You know, they're doubling their, the, uh, what they have to pay for a tag match yeah so i'm sure there are people that don't do it for that reason but uh, sorry <laughs> i don't know what to tell also, you 
in the same time, I think um, a lot of, I think women's wrestling in general is evolving so much that it's so amazing that back in the day, like when we first started, if there was one woman's match on the show, that was a lot. Like there were a lot of promotions that never had any women's matches. So now I think people are are more willing to pay for women than just be like, oh, well, you know, we only have, okay, this is your only girls match. You can still have four women. So I think in the last few years, maybe that's when the switch happened. But I also, I definitely can't pinpoint one and say like, oh, this is what happened. I do think that promoters are getting smarter and realizing like, damn, women can wrestle. So let's have more than just one match or have one girl. I actually was just talking to somebody about this the other day where he was like, he's so tired of promotions that only bring one girl and then half a wrestle guy. And he's like, not because I don't like intergender wrestling, but it's just promoters don't want to, certain promoters don't want to pay two people. They want to pay one girl who's going to wrestle like their local guy. So I think a lot of that is also evolving. And it's just, it's just a testament to how great women's wrestling is. I mean, if we're just talking about women's wrestling and not tag team as a whole, I would say what changed was the women's revolution WWE, because once something gets popular on television, all the end of promotions want to follow suit. So like, I'm not saying that some are not authentic and I would, I'm not saying most aren't authentic, but there are definitely promotions that are like, oh, we got to book women now because it's popular. We got to put them in the main event because it's popular. We have to make a women's championship because they didn't have one ever, but now all of a sudden they're, they're having a tournament for their inaugural uh, women's champion. So, um, you know, some of them are just chasing the profits and what's popular and trendy, but yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the WWE might've brought that woman's, the, the women's wrestling back to light, but honestly, I really feel what made the grit and the grime, the real work was done on the indies and then the smaller promotions where they were actually given time to actually do their craft as opposed mm-hmm. to five minutes, get it done, including your walk-in. So it's, I, I, I do definitely think that I, you know, the respect goes with ladies like you for building it and keeping it going. But one of the things I, I definitely wanted to ask is, and I wanted to kind of borrow a page out of P.D. Williams's book because he's now working up north. And so now we can steal his questions. Hopefully we don't get a lawsuit from Vince, but I digress. Did they tell you guys, like, what was it like? Did they, you know, before they gave you guys the belt, was it talked about before? Did you guys know going in it or was it just kind of a surprise or how did it kind of go down? Someone's smiling. Marty looks like she wants to answer. She does. Only because of the person. I mean, it's literally no secret. And I feel like she's going to put a restraining order against me. I need to stop talking so much about her. It's no secret how much I love Mickey James. Like Mickey James is somebody that I've looked up to my entire career. Um, I was a big fan of hers before I became a wrestler. And then I, you know, got to work with her at Impact for a little bit. I have so much love and respect for her. And she's actually the one who uh, invited us to power and power, invited us to the show. And then like told us that we were winning the titles. And I remember kind of being like, Oh, cool. Yeah, no, totally. Like, yeah, I'm totally not going to freak out. I'm totally not like, I'm sure I was driving home and I'm like, I'm not going to just like pull over and screech in my car, especially because for us, we were such a new tag team. I don't think people realize that our matches that when we won the titles, was that three and four or four and five, three and four. It was our, it was our match three and four together, like ever as a tag, because we have, because of our friendship and because of everything that we do together and because of how we've been able to market ourselves as a tag team. People believe that we've been a tag team forever. And we're like, oh, we've been a tag team since uh, October, 2020. They're like, wait, I'm sorry, what? So for us, it was very, very special. I know, especially like it, for me, you know, I, I know that the NW doesn't like to talk about this, but uh, there is a little asterisk next to, uh, there's never been a Dominican, there's never been a Dominican person recognized by the NWA as a champion. So to be able to get that accomplishment and not only get that accomplishment, but I had that with my best friend was like, it was just like, it's something that I feel like it, I still really don't understand. Like it still hasn't really completely processed. So I don't know if that answered your question because I kind of just wanted to ramble. <laughs> no, you, you got halfway, but now we're going to okay. get the other half over here. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, she needs to answer. <laughs> I want, I want, I want the other's uh, perspective. Yeah, thank you. That's all. That's all you, boo. On the question of how we were told. Yes. So like, what were you going through? Like she just, you know, she, she was she obviously very passionate. Yes. Um, what I remember, yes. I remember just the call with Mickey when she told us that we were being booked. So I don't even remember exactly if she told us that we were getting the belts then, 
But I remember pacing back and forth on the phone with her in my living room. And just that being a little surreal because Marty and I had left the NWA at this point. So we had been gone for months. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we want to book you for this tag tournament. And then, oh yeah, and you're also going to win. We're like, wait, what? We, we had parted ways. So it just came out of nowhere. Um, but we left on good terms, obviously. And that's why you don't burn bridges. And uh, Billy still had a lot of faith in us, obviously. I mean, yeah, it's been, it's been very surreal. And I think I, it, won't, it won't set in until after, until much later. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that was cool. That was a cool little thing. Yeah, we we did. Did that. <laughs> I think also um, we had a conversation with somebody and they told us like Billy specifically chose you guys. Like Billy was very specific about who he wanted to come back for the tournament, who he wanted to come back to hold the titles. And, and we've had conversations with him where he's told us how much he trusts us and how much he believes in us as a team and as individuals. And I think that's also very, very important. And like, that's something that, I don't know, that's kind of like priceless. I like to think I do my homework and Marty, please don't give me the Ricky Starks contract treatment on this question, because I know how much you guys hate having to do the mom's basement podcast stuff. But can you talk about like the first time you guys met and was it like an instant connection or did you guys have to work into a friendship? Um, so we were introduced uh, by Jessica Havoc. Was it 2010? I know we've talked about it a bunch of times. So it's 2011. It was 2011. That's, it was 2011. That was my debut for WSU. Yeah. So right before she debuted, I had been working at WSU in another tag team, my first ever tag team. I had been working there and we don't <laughs> Maybe it's the past. Um, and <laughs> Jessica Havoc, and Jessica Havoc and I like kind of like just hit it off. And she came up to me one day and she was like, Hey, my friend AK is gonna start driving down with me. I think you're gonna love her. And uh told AK basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so we met and it was like, oh my gosh, yeah, oh my god, you're so cool, you're awesome. Like, I feel like we clicked right away where it was like, I know we did had we, that. Did we go to Times Square that on our first meeting with it was the first meeting, but it was okay. around that time with the bootleg guys, Hello Kitty? Yes, we is <laughs> where we can get into, but it was I feel like that was a few months later because it was already warm. Oh, uh, so we like I was still living. I love how she remembers time. this. Like, yeah, and the temperature it was like eighty degrees. I was. Yeah, I don't know exactly what I was wearing. I know what you were wearing. Yeah. I well, hold on a sec. Hold on a second. Like, why are we glazing over the fucking Hello Kitty thing? I want. What's going on with that? Um, I wish I. I feel like I can. I don't know if you guys like super post pictures, but I can find the pictures and send them yeah. to you guys. Um, we we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So I used to work on like 33rd Street when I lived in New York. And I don't know why. I mean, we had WSU that weekend. So Alex yeah. and Jessica came up, uh, you know, from the Midwest and they came to New York. And so I met up with them and we went to Times Square. And you know, like the people that dress up like as characters and stuff. So this was like super boot like Hello Kitty. Like this was like. Like she was, was like, she, that costume went through the ringer. Like, yeah, and like her mom <laughs> probably made it for her. Like it was not. And so whatever, we're like, oh, let's go get a picture with Hello Kitty. Cause I was obsessed with Hello Kitty at this point. So we're like, let's go get a picture with Hello Kitty. And she's just standing there. And whenever we like come up to her, like try to talk to her, she just keeps like patting her purse. She's got like a little purse and she just keeps doing this. And then she's kind of like pacing, <laughs> just patting the purse. And we're like, she wants us to pay her. This was my first experience ever in New with a New York City mascot with someone out in the street. That's so I had no idea how this goes. And I'm like, why does she keep doing that? Like, she was about to chase us down for that yeah, dollar. Like, it was not. So all right, we all pull out money. We take pictures. And we we have these pictures, like these three grown-ass adults. I like, taking this random picture of this girl in, in, in uh, Times Square. So I feel like that was kind of like the start of like our friendship. And we knew we liked each other. Like, we obviously knew we like, we did click, we did connect. But I was living in New York and she was living in Detroit. So we, we lived very far away and we only saw each other at WSU. Well, then flash forward a few years and I moved to Ohio. So then, of course. Good move. I love Ohio. Thank you. I love Ohio. I, I can't too. tell if he's being sarcastic. I, I can't either. I actually really can't tell. No, no, I was well, going to make the sarcastic well, joke. Well, okay. That's why I'm okay. So where do you live in Ohio? I don't live in Ohio now, but I was living in, um, oh. I was living no. here. I'm moving back. I'm moving back. I'm moving back. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> But I was living near Cleveland. It was a little, little ass town called Streetsboro. But um, I moved there and we had, I'm fucking rambling. It's got so hot. It's just how I've been talking. Um, so we realized <laughs> we, uh, we had to make the drive from, so she drove from Michigan. She drove to Ohio, picked me up. And then we, and I was kind of nervous because it was like our solo drive. We we're doing by ourselves. Like it was our first time. And I'm like, 
you know, we're cool, but like, fuck, eight hours in the car each way. Like, are we that cool? And then we made the drive. We didn't turn the radio on once. We didn't stop to get coffee. We didn't do energy drinks. We talked the entire way there. We wrestled. We may have even wrestled each other. I'm not sure. That might have been the match that we had that we don't remember. Yeah, I don't really that remember. Might have been it. We wrestled. We drove back. And then so we drove another eight hours back. And then we sat in, the, in my uh, driveway and just talked for like another hour or two. And then I was <laughs> like, you got to go. Like, you still have two hours. So I feel like that was probably when we were like, oh, damn, we're like, we're friends, man. Like, we're, we just we're, become we're friends. And I mean, as you can tell, Marty, Marty loves to talk more than I do. But um, I that that was a big deal, especially for me. I'm like, I just talked to this person for 16 hours, more than 16 hours. Like, that's a big deal for me. Yeah. Well, the reason why I asked about Ohio, because one, uh, one of my favorite pizza spots in the United States of America is a place called Ohio Pie. And they're in Cleveland. And it's incredible pizza. And that's why I, 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 lo- I love Cleveland and I love Ohio. It's always been very good. Cleveland has so. great food. Cleveland has great food. Agreed. Have you ever had? Um, and they also got M Dog. I love M Dog. Yeah. Who doesn't love M Dog? I just yeah. saw M Dog. I, I saw him in Philly or no Pittsburgh. Anyways, so, did me, you want? Super, two, five second story. Me and M Dog had the like. I, even when we both lived in Cleveland, we never used to see each other in Cleveland. We always used to see each other at the fucking Chicago airport. And so we always used to run into each other. Like we would go months without seeing each other and then just run into each other at the Chicago airport. Like that was like our thing for a really long time. Like it hasn't happened in a while, but that was like our thing for very, very long. We just kept running each other there. But yeah, long story short, Cleveland rocks. What's that I, your question, I, I, I don't even remember if I have a question anymore. I feel like it's more <laughs> of a conversation these days. You know what I mean? With these, Which is know. good. Yeah. No, that's what you want to be interviewed or, or, or with an interviewee. You yeah. want a kind of more of a conversation than, than anything else. So I guess what I was going to ask is because the glow experience that you had, um, being, uh, what, what's the comparison, would you say, from what you did there to what you're doing now? Where? Glow. We never worked with Glow. No, not the glow. Uh, sorry. Shine? Shimmer? It's shimmer. No, no, no. Shimmer. Sorry. Oh, I, it's I, okay. It, I'm like, I funny, like, I have a glow hat. Yeah, I was like, AK loves glow. So, yes. Well, yeah, well that's, that's probably what, why I was tuning in. I'm a little psychic. But, but no, we're not shimmer. that old. We're not that old. No, no, no. <laughs> but anyways, my question was the, sh- the shimmer. What you guys were doing there? What you guys are doing now? What's up? What's the comparison? I mean, Shimmer is a completely different ball game, I would say. Um, it never, well, I can't say never. I was going to say it never taped live, but sometimes I think very, very rarely they would have a pay-per-view online, but it was always uh, four tapings in a weekend and not storyline driven. So a lot of random matches we would have. And um, we definitely, it, there was like a certain camaraderie in the Shimmer locker room. And, um, I mean, I, we met so many of our close friends there. We know so many people, actually, I I feel like the majority of the women's wrestlers that we really bonded with are from the shimmer locker room because we got to see our friends from all over the world twice a year. So it was always very special to us. You know, they would, especially when uh, Dave was bringing in the girls from Japan, the girls from Australia, the girls from England. So, um, it was very special for that reason. I feel like that was always my favorite part. (laughs) Not going to lie. Was seeing all of my friends. Same. It was, it was. There's something we always say, like, there's something super magical about, and we don't know, is it like, is it the Berwyn Eagles Club? Is it us? Like, what is it? There was just something, and, and maybe that was a part of it. It was just, you had these, Im, like, immensely talented women from all over the world, and you could buy a ticket and sit down in Chicago and watch them wrestle. Like, it was it was such an amazing, incredible experience, and we are very, very thankful to, to Prezak. And Prezak, Prezak's the, I want to say like the first person that really believed in women's wrestling, that really believed that women could be the show, not just a part of the show, but they could be the show. And he's the one that was like, you know, these were amazing matches. And even though like AK said, it wasn't storyline driven, you had more opportunities to have matches with people that you never would have worked. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and I think that is what, what made it so, so special. And, and, you know, fingers crossed that eventually we'll, we'll be back in the Berwyn Eagles club, uh, wrestling for shimmer again. 
Well, you know, I kind of remember the other half of my question, even though I fucked it up with glow. I, well, I, I don't know why that came in my mind. You, it's I, because I used, you know used that to, you yeah, know that you um, know. in your research that yeah. on my Twitch I watch glow on Thursday nights. That's why. Maybe that's what it was, but. Uh, <laughs> No, but I, you know, I was a fan of, you know, I would watch that. It would come on in the afternoons after, you know, most of the TV shows, but like a lot of the, the, the when I would used to see like women companies, whether it be all Japan women's or whatever it was, or the, the, the primarily women companies, they're all Japanese, or maybe there was some from overseas or whatever like that. And these girls, like, I mean, really kind of elevated with their style. Do you guys ever go back and watch any of those tapes and watch any of those old matches like Bull Nakano or any, oh, yeah. anybody like that? Oh, okay. Yeah. What were you going to say, Marty? I thought he was going to say like, do you go back and watch your matches? Like, I did fight? too. I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. But, <laughs> but older wrestling. Yes. I love, I love Bull Nakano. I'm a big fan. Um, I am a big fan of Mako Satsumura, who's still active today. I got to wrestle with her in Japan, the Sendai Girls, in 2013. That was an amazing experience. Um, but yes, I like to go back and watch the stuff that's even older than that. And I do watch Glow, too, since you brought up Glow. I think that is a... I wouldn't... I put it on the opposite end of the spectrum from, like, uh, all Japan. But it oh, yeah. is still entertaining for in its own right. The... Evolution. Uh, we talk about this a lot with char- with characters, wrestlers who portray characters. Do you guys kind of have an idea of the evolution of how you want your tag team to play out down the road, or do you guys, you know, footloose and fancy free right now? I mean, I'm always footloose and fancy free for real. Yeah. Like, I am very fly. I mean, we both are very fly by the seat of our pants. Um, I feel like me especially. Like last week, I this is not related to wrestling really, but like last week, I just decided last minute to go with my friend from Orlando to LA. We just took a road trip. She needed help moving. I was like, I'll go like just very randomly. I just left for days. Um, so that's kind of how I roll. And I, I don't like, it kind of goes back to the other question that you asked earlier about like, what are are your plans to elevate this title? I just feel like it's not really something you can plan. It's organic. Um, Yeah. It's organic, especially when you're, when you just are trying to be authentically yourself. I mean, it just, I feel like that's what got us this far. So it can only take us further. Agreed. So you would say that what, you know, the evolution of these characters that you're playing are more to the real person than as opposed to, you know, the real person, obviously times 20, any performers like that. But would you say it's more core in the principle of, of who you are as people? Definitely. 100%. 100%. And I think that comes across in our, we, we talk about this a lot, authenticity. Like, like I mentioned before, when people are like, man, like this looks like you guys, like you guys are so in sync. You guys gel so well. And we're like, well, this is who we really are. Like we, we know each other in and out of the ring and we, we know ourselves, obviously. So we are going to, we're going to be ourselves as much as possible, you know, as much as, and like you said, you know, we're going to turn it up to 10, obviously, but still like, I think, uh, and I, I feel like, our characters are going to evolve in the way that we evolve as humans, the way we evolve as people, and and you know the way that our relationship continues to evolve as as friends as well. Uh, and it's not anything that we can plan. You know, we're we don't know what, what's going to happen in the next five months, in the next two months. We don't know what's going to happen next week. So I think um, for us, it really is just a lot of let's fuck around and find out. We do. <laughs> we feed off of each other really well. We have good banter. I think people um, really vibe with that, and I I do think that that is what makes it work. Now, Lars and I have been in a lot of locker rooms unrelated to wrestling, no. uh, but it, it, that that look was very justified, by the way. Um, I've, I've noticed being – I actually had – well, hold on. I actually have been in many, many locker rooms, you know, I, too many. Like even when I didn't want to even be there, I was in the fucking locker <laughs> Same. room. Same. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like I remember being in the locker room in, in where the Seahawks play. And it's like a fucking maze. And I was lost half the fucking time. So I just stayed. And I just sat with a thing of hummus and some like broccoli. Because I was just like, I'm not going to go out and get fucking lost again. Like, what (laughs) the fuck? What's the point? Fine catering. Sorry, Dennis. That's it. Yeah. Well, we, you know, I don't even think we had that that day. I think it was like, (laughs) I mean, I just. Whose hummus did you steal? Mine. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) No, no. But it was like, I found our room, but I never could find my way anywhere else but it was, it was like Groundhog Day, just on tour. But then again, that's kind of what it is anyway. So it can be. Sorry, Dennis. Thank you've you. You've been in more. Lo- you've been in locker rooms, yes. And continue. I apologize. 
legally, by the way, I want to throw that out there, guys. Yes. I've legally been in a lot of locker rooms. Okay. Four times illegally, but a lot legally. I don't keep count. But going back to the NWA, I want to touch on this is you don't ever really hear anything coming out. You you hear stuff from AEW, you hear stuff from Impact and WWE, but you guys have a real tight lockdown on what comes in or what comes out as far as information wise spoilers maybe who's arguing who's fight who you don't really hear that coming out of the nwa and i've always kind of wondered it has to be by design but how in your minds do you guys keep a lock on this when everybody can't rush out to you know drop information to all the sheets so I think what's what's important is um, I, I obviously I can only speak for the women's locker room. I don't know what goes on in the men's locker room, and I would imagine it's I can tell you because well, I'm, I, I can imagine what can go on. But we from you know we were a part of the original power when it was a very very small locker room. There were maybe like five or six girls there, and basically you know we just rotated. And now the locker room has grown a lot, and so I know like when we came back, it was kind of like we've known obviously a lot of the girls. Like I worked with Taryn at Impact. And, and we've known a lot of the girls in, in different capacities, so, but it was kind of like, damn, are we going to come back? And is it going to be weird? Is it going to be like all this, you know, is it going to be drama because there's new people, blah, blah. I hate when people are like, we're like a family, but it's like super chill. We really, it, we really all get along. I, I think if there was a bunch of drama, you can't contain that. Like, that's the kind of stuff that someone's going to leak and no one's leaking anything because there's nothing to tell. Like, I feel like we get along really well. Like we love, we actually generally all like each other. Mm-hmm. We hang out when we get a chance. Like our locker room's really, really great. And I'm like, I'm like really grateful. And it's, it's such a, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's a great, it's a great experience. It's something that I look forward to. I'm not like, fuck, I gotta go to NWA this weekend, but I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Like I'm excited. I can't wait to see everybody. There was only one incident that I can think of where there was like almost a little bit of drama between two girls and they were newer too. Wasn't the OGs, but it got handled. So there was nothing to leak because it was addressed. It was handled. Everyone, you know what I mean? There wasn't like this cattiness, bitterness, talk behind their back. It was like, no, we're going to address this. We're going to handle it. And now it's squashed. So that's it. And I think having a smaller rock- locker room definitely does help. Yeah. And I think we have enough seasoned wrestlers in that locker room as a whole not just a women's locker room also enough vets there to kind of keep it under control like keep some respect in the locker room because I hear stories I hear stories about other locker rooms and I'm like that sounds like hell that sounds like (laughs) Like, pure hell and I don't want that I don't want that in NWA and I think that we have enough I think it comes down to having the vets in the locker room that we're like "Mm, no you're gonna sit down we're gonna we're gonna squash this right now as far as spoilers go with the fans, I don't know if I've ever heard Billy like say, don't, hey, nobody leak anything. I, I, maybe they do say that in the announcements before the show. I've never noticed. I think it's because our studio audience is so tight. Like we, you know, it's a smaller audience because of the building yeah. and it does feel like its own little, like, I don't want to say click because that's not the right Family? word. Sorry. Family family yes that's a little cliche too i know marty just said that but it's like it's it's a, it's a very intimate atmosphere it's a bubble. that's what it is it, it is a bubble and like we've said before um with like other things like with our patreons or or with our social medias and stuff people that are there want to be there if you are spending your money you're going out of your way to come to this very small intimate setting it's because you want to be there and so like I mean, obviously every once in a while you get a troll you just don't feed the troll and that's that's kind of what that's like that's become like my life motto in the last few months is don't feed the troll and I think um if you don't acknowledge <laughs> people if you don't acknowledge people that are talking crap then you know you can move past it and these spoilers aren't getting out and people aren't like oh that sucks so I think um I think it does come a lot to the fact that it is such a small audience and people are so invested in what we're doing which is awesome well it's studio wrestling you know what I mean and I feel like the people who get in and, and go there really want to be there. Um, first of all, like the way that it's designed, it's supposed to look very old school. You know, it lo- looks like the original NWA, you know, obviously their t- TV show, w- world, world, class, world, ch- world Championship Wrestling on Saturday's TBS. I mean, do you guys, I mean, now you guys got guys like Ricky Morton there. You got all this, this history, um, you know, that that's, that's sort of, you know, they, the guys who made the history in the NWA are there, right? And then there's, there's all kinds of, of great talents there. 
do you often take you know the opportunity to go talk to them ask them for advice go watch my matches any of that stuff we I think for us, do. um I remember saying the same thing. Like for us in the women's locker room, we have Jazz and Medusa there. Yes, like, that's what I was gonna say. Okay, that's what, that's what I figured. That's what I figured we were going with. We have Jazz and Medusa there, and you know, they're they're we're asking them for advice. They're watching our matches. We're asking for feedback. We're asking for critique. And I mean, like, what? Like, we have Jazz and Medusa in our locker room. Like, these are like these are our aunties that we hang out with like for four or five days straight, and just like it's it's great. And yeah, like um, uh, like I and said, Mickey. like. And Mickey, yeah, who's actively wrestling. I know we know how you feel about Mickey. Not say her name too much, so I don't get. That's why I brought it up. I Thank said you. it so you didn't have to. And she's actively wrestling too, well, so you can actually work with her. If you show up next time with a cowboy hat with a country record, then we got oh, a problem. You mean this? Oh. oh my god! I wish I wish you had one. Okay, we're gonna be in Knoxville and Nashville next month, so you're getting a cowboy hat. That's all I'm. I have say. my boots. I will wear my boots. June 11th, June 12th, June 13th and 14th, I believe. Yes. All right. We have not talked about this at all. So yes, always ready. Uh, we are actually very, very excited. I've never been to um, Knoxville, so I'm very excited. Um, always ready is uh, uh, the first day of the pay-per-view. And then we have a taping the day after, and then we have Nashville for two days. So very cool. Very exciting. And by the way, you can go to nwatickets.com, T-I-X. So I got that link there. Uh, Kyle sent it all to me. So I'm like staring right at well, you know, it. I'm I want to, like, I know what I'm I doing. Wanna, I want to say something before your next question. I've been watching the Saturday show you recently. I think there's two episodes now you you say, and I, I love it because it, to me, it's like a flashback into my childhood, but it's modern day, modern wrestling. And, um, I just want to, I hope I'm seeing, we're going to see you guys there again soon. So that's all I want to say or sometime. Come on, let's go. Anyways, Dennis. I, I kind of want to wrap at least my questions up with talking about your Twitch stream, which I am a big fan of. I really enjoy it. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Lars, I, Lars, to go back to your glow thing, we were actually talking about your Twitch and you watching glow. And one of the questions we were going to ask you was, did you, do you draw from some of those old glow personalities into what you guys do in the NWA now you both? I think that glow it I wouldn't not necessarily because I think we are an extension of who we are it, it is modern wrestling is so weird because I feel like I was raised in wrestling in a very old school manner that's why I love NWA and I feel like it's a great fit for me I love technical wrestling I love old school wrestling I love keeping kayfabe which we have not done on this interview I love you know watching glow and like the very um over the top characters but I also feel like modern day wrestling, like there is a time and a place for that, but I feel like there's so much more of um, just real people, right? Like more authentically uh, people just be an extension of who they are themselves turned up to a hundred or whatever. So I feel like that's more of the category we fall in We're we're ourselves versus, you know, I'm a mailman and this is my gimmick, you know? And that's what I feel like a lot of the eighties glow was Love that gimmick. <laughs> You know, there was like, there's the cheerleader and then there's the, yeah. I'm trying to think of who we were watching. The Russian. Day. Well, it's hard because I'm trying to think of which character I can talk about. That's not like racist or, you know, because of those, some of those characters, I'm like, oh, like that would not uh, fly today. But yes, the old characters are not so much um, more gimmicky. We don't really, I wouldn't say Marty and I fall into that. However, I do find it very fascinating to learn from, to learn what to do, what not to do. And I also enjoy, uh, there's still something to be to be brought from watching something like that, even if it's not something that you do per se. I'm not trying to rip off anyone. So I like drawing from different areas. I think especially when I was in Impact, I was doing that with my with my look, just drawing from different things like burlesque, not wrestling related, but I just like the big feathers, you know, that type of thing. Are you guys done? <laughs> I am. Because she's sweating over here. I know she wants to say some more. <laughs> no, no, she, I feel like that. She, she got it. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess, I guess if I had a last question, um, you've obviously been, you've, you've done a lot of work. At the end of the day, and I ask this to all the wrestlers who come on here, because it's, a, it's an important question to me as a fan, right? And as um, a professional in my business, right? To me, it's more about that creative freedom and being able to express myself the way I want to. 
when you get success, obviously there's a lot of money. Some people, some people you hear the, a lot of the old school guys go, well, did you make a buck? You know what I mean? And I don't, I don't want to mention any names, but there's that old school mentality. And then there's that kind of, I don't, I would say more modern mentality, which is like the creative freedom is most important. Uh, I know both are equally as important because some people have to feed their families, obviously, but sitting where you are sitting right now, what would you say you put the most importance on the creative freedom or the financial aspect of it? We'll start with you because I know you're ready to go. Well, I feel like my answer is going to be something, it's going to be similar to what AK says. I think the fact that we have, like, especially in the last, let's say just in the last two years with how the world has changed and, you know, the way that we make money has changed because of the world in general. I think us having creative freedom has allowed us to have financial freedom as well. Creative freedom has brought financial freedom for, for both of us in different ways. And I think, um, I, I think, like you said, it goes hand in hand. It's hard to tell. I guess because I haven't worked for WWE, I haven't gone to make those millions where I can't be like, oh, well, this is definitely what I, but I think right now for us, we can definitely say that us having the creative freedom to go wherever we want, do whatever we want, have whatever pages we want, have Patreons, have Twitch, have OnlyFans, whatever it is we want to do, that has brought so much financial freedom, which obviously, like you said, like you got to feed your families at the end of the day, you got to feed yourself, got to take care of yourself. So it, it does go hand in hand. My short answer was going to be creative freedom, hands down. Obviously, we're not going to lie and act like we don't want to make any money because yes, we do. And not only for the necessity, but yeah, who doesn't want to make money? But um, I think that especially sitting down during the pandemic, the beginning of quarantine and really thinking about what's important, really brings something like that to light of like, what, why am I doing this? Why am I still in the game? You know, what, what is in it for me? Am I just trying to like, for me personally, and I, I know Marty too, like my goal is not to be here to get famous. That's not my goal here. I love wrestling. Yes. I want to make money, but if I, I can make money a million other ways, like I can just stay on OnlyFans and make money. I can stop wrestling right now, but I love wrestling. And that's why I'm here. And being able to have that creative, creative freedom is everything without it. I mean, you see what I, I see what's happened to all of our friends, you know, people that have left companies because they weren't happy and they're making all that money, but there's something missing. And it's because they're not doing something that's fulfilling to them. And really, I think that the secret to life is we all want to find something that fulfills us, that makes us feel like uh, there's some meaning behind all of this chaos. Well, I think I'm going to start the whole dot it, dog dating industry. I think that's my next move. Because I obviously only there's, oh, is I only don't know. Corgis? Well, obviously, being here today, I realize there's a market. But anyways, <laughs> um, no, thank you for that answer. I appreciate it. Go ahead, Dennis. Sorry. Do you know how sad it would be if the corgi won over me? Like, how do I? How I would... will say also, um, if you recall, the only reason I didn't get to pick anyone is because someone kept coming in and kicking everyone out because you could pay a certain amount of money to kick people off, and he kept kicking off everyone until there was no one left. So I couldn't pick anyone anyway, but I think he actually saved me. So but he also would not have picked it for me. So in hell no. Daddy I was traumatized Warbucks from that dropped the money to keep you uh, safe there. What? I said Daddy Warbucks was oh, keeping yeah. the money to keep you safe. I will never call that person daddy, but yes. <laughs> Uh, in a second, we'll give you guys a chance to promote, but I do want to say nwatickets.com. Go there. Uh, we're on Fight TV. You guys are on Fight TV. Uh, let's, Lars and I are both subscribers. We both watch the NWA. We're fans. So make sure you go check out the subscription service over there. It is phenomenal. As we said, June 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. You guys will look at those titles. Out. Let's go. Come on. I already know Marty has hers too. Yeah. They're the it's first. Still, Lars, it they're the first like to do it. it. I know it's insane. Yes. You got to have it ready. It still smells like fresh leather. It does. <laughs> they're still great, new. Can you, can you, I, I, I was hoping to get a close up on that. Wow. Wow. Look at that. That's so, so beautiful. Well, so make beautiful. Sure, make sure you head to Nashville. Uh, go check it out. Dates are on the website. Ladies, where can people find you guys online, uh, OnlyFans, Twitch, whatever you guys want to talk about? All of it. The easiest place to go is allisonk.com and martybell.com. That's where all of our stuff is. But I have OnlyFans, Patreon, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter. Go engage with all my stuff. Marty as well. 
I have, um, I do, the only thing I don't have is OnlyFans and I don't have a Twitch, but um, you will see me pop up every once in a while on AK's Twitch for, uh, for Hot Girl Twitch, which uh, we have another coming, coming soon. We have one coming up soon and we actually need suggestions on who our guests should be. We've had a bunch of names thrown out there. We've had uh, Eddie Kingston, still my favorite name that's out there. I mean. Lars Fredrickson. Lars. You want to come be our cabana boy for Hot Girl Twitch? Why not? I mean, what do I got to do? Uh, I, just listen, I only, got, I, I only got a MySpace, but um, yeah, <laughs> no problem. Slash Twiggy one. I, I think, I'm pretty sure I still know mine. I'm pretty sure it's still uh, I don't know what you love, but yeah. Those days. But um, simpler yeah, times. So, it's way simpler, easier, but I never really had a problem. My point is, is that, yes, I will. Uh, sure. Wh where do I got to go? All right. We'll figure it out. I don't know. We, we can, will, we can we'll fly you to Detroit. We, we yeah. can come to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can do it in Cleveland. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll just buy a city block there for a couple hundred bucks and we can just do it on my new block. All right, perfect. <laughs> I love that town. Detroit's one of my all time favorite towns. First town that ever got my band at nice. straight up. Your so phone anyway. is there. Yep. Oh, that's right. You're there. Yeah. I was just there. Oh, yeah. We hung out. There. I was there. Remember? I know. I, duh. No, I was just there. So, wait, are I you from Detroit. Dennis? Are you from Michigan? I am. I'm in. Uh, well, I guess I won't ask you right now, but I'm in Heartland for everybody who wants address. to stalk me. <laughs> Rob Pin. Yeah, I'm in Heartland. If you do want to stalk me, that's where because <laughs> everybody wants to stalk a 44 year old wrestling podcaster. So I feel like I'm pretty safe. Yes, there are very few and far between. So <laughs> listen, for everybody at home, the podcast is over. We're going to say our goodbyes off the air. Hopefully, this was not the podcast you guys were dreading in like Lars's mom's basement. <laughs> no, it was so thank much fun. Did. No, thank you guys. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, Hex, for coming on the podcast. Thank yeah. you. See you at NWA.